As usual, we saved the best for last and uh, are now looking forward to a treat, I think, a rather coherent session on the foundations of quantum mechanics and interpretational issues. And also coherent uh, in the sense that the speakers all have some ties to Brazil, either very direct or rather indirect, as I was just told by Thiago about our first speaker. But before this, since it's the last session, I hope uh, my uh, colleagues and other organizers will agree with me that this is a nice opportunity now to, in everybody's name, thank Jaume, who hopefully hasn't left the room. <laughs> and actually, not only Jaume, but also his little helpers in the back, and those people that we even haven't seen. <laughs> Yeah, especially for turning this elusive conference, HQ4, that had been planned already earlier um, into reality and for doing such a marvelous job with everything. Thank you. And even though the speakers now are all uh, with strong ties to Brazil or Brazilians, there's unfortunately no caipirinhas. Um, and uh, I will be sure you will make up for that by uh, like the interesting stuff that you're going to be telling about. So the first speaker is uh, Virgil Besson uh, from Lyon. Uh, he's doing his PhD at the moment and uh, is actually being supervised by Olival, I hear. And the title of the talk is The Causal Program in France During the 1950s at the Intersection of Science, Philosophy, and Ideology. The stage is yours. By contrast with many of the previous, previous presentations, the story I'm going to tell you is not what we can call a success story. Here? Okay. Here? Okay. So, <clears throat> by contrast with many of the previ previous presentations, the story I'm going to tell you is not what we can call a success story. This is a story of a marginal theory in quantum mechanics, the history of the causal interpretation. Uh, so this work is related to my PhD thesis. I hope I will, be, I will defend uh, at the beginning of the next year. So uh, the story of the causal program started with the famous papers of David Bohm, a suggested interpretation of the quantum theory in terms of hidden variables. So the theory is usually described as an attempt to challenge the orthodox interpretation of the Copenhagen School. In the 50s, the bastion of the supporters of the theory was in Paris at the Henri Poincaré Institute, and the development of the theory involved a group of about 10 physicists with international links. It is generally admitted by historians, by historians that Marxism play a key role in the positive reception of the causal interpretation. The thesis about the Marxist roots of the resurgence of the debate over the interpretation of quantum theory during the 1950s was first formulated by historian Max Jammer. So Max Jammer expressed the idea that the hidden variable theory was a consequence of the growing influence of Marxism in Western countries and should be investigated uh, in the same manner as Paul Forman did about the historic, historical connection between the culture of, of Burma, Germany known for its uh, irrationality and anti-scientism, and the emerging concept of quantum acausality. Um, so, um, the physics, uh, this thesis is the starting point for numerous studies about the hidden variable theory, and is quite consensual among historians. For instance, uh, here a quote from uh, historian Andrew Cross, who say the crisis in physics was debated in France far more widely and with far more vig vigor than in any other Western country. So, nevertheless, in an almost exclusively Marxist context. Again, as in USSR, it was only with the Soviet Party intervention in 1947 that the crisis in physics was established as a major concern for communist physicists in France. Then, uh, he added, uh, the characteristic which, di which uh, distinguishes the crisis in physics from most of our case studies is that the protagonists were unable to appeal to experiment 
or the mathematical of the theory in another than a rhetorical way to support their position. So, uh, the party intervention Cross refers to was USSR Central Committee Secretary Andrei Zdanov's speech of uh, 1947. Zdanov initiated a campaign which aimed at reinforcing the control of the bureaucracy over the intellectual. Zdanovism made a clear distinction between bourgeois and proletarian sciences. The most emblematic case, of course, went from biology with the Lysenko affair, and if no official statement was made about quantum mechanics, Zdanov criticized the free will attributed to the electron in modern bourgeois atomic physics. However, however, Zdanovism played in physics a very, dif a very different role in comparison with biology. Uh, in the French case, if the thesis of Lysenko was strongly supported by the French Communist Party, uh, the condemnation of a supposed bourgeois interpretation of quantum mechanics is not so clear. Actually, if one looks at the content of French communist journals between 1947 and 1952, so before the publication of Bohm, you will find no explicit references against the orthodox interpretation of quantum mechanics. The debate really started in 1952, when the astrophysicist Avery Schatzman, a personal friend of Jean-Pierre Jean Vigier, uh, who supported the causal interpretation, but, with, but without being directly involved in its uh, theoretical development, so, Chassman wrote an article, Physique Quantique et Réalité, for the communist journal La Pensée. This article was the first one which criticized complementarity and supports the causal interpretation. The debate will continue during all the, uh, during all the decade. It opposed the communists of the Henri, Henri Poincaré Institute to the majority of the other French communist physicists. The debate inside the PCF ended in the early 60s, at the time, same time than in the when the Soviet branch of the Copernican interpretation became dominant in the USSR. Uh, another uh, example of uh, this interpretation in terms of uh, Marxist, Marxist influence, so it's a quote from uh, Andreas Karja Kotzen. And so she, uh, she also say that, um, So, the, the, at the end of the, quote, uh, of the quote, the group around him and Vigier in France were strongly motivated in their work on the causal program by, by Marxist thought. But she also added, and I think which, this is very important, with the notable exception of De Broglie. So, uh, uh, it's, it's obvious that uh, Louis De Broglie was not a Marxist, and uh, this notable exception should not be uh, disregarded as an abnormality, but a key to understand what was the approach of the, on the motivation of the Henri Poincaré Institute group. So, um, De Broglie um, ad admitted that he decided to abandon the probabilistic interpretation of quantum mechanics and to return to his old view of um, uh, 1926 and 1927 that is to say the pilot wave on double solution theory, mainly because it was convinced that, on the basis of the contribution of Jean-Pierre Vigier, the pilot wave theory offered, a great, offered great perspectives in relation to modern physical issues. So, in, my point is that I agree with the idea that many of these physicists used what they understood as dialectical materialism to justify their orientation towards the causal program. However, I think we can't reduce their motivation to a merely ideological posture. In my opinion, and that is what I would like to show you in my presentation, the group pursued a program of research on theoretical physics was linked to modern achievement of sciences. This program aimed at giving a comprehensible picture of quantum world, which goes beyond the only question of determinism and causality in quantum mechanics. So, uh, basically, we can identify three stages in the development of the causal program. The first, uh, the first stage is from 1951 to 1955, what I call the Bohmian model. The second one, from 1954 to 1960, is the uh, hydrodynamical model. And the last one, from 1957 to 1966, is the rotator model or bilocal theory and the theory of particles. So, in the debate of the over the interpretation of the foundation of quantum mechanics, 
uh, actors, so what I call actors are physicists, philosophers, and historians, mainly focused on the Bohmian model and eventually on the early development of the hydrodynamical model. Whereas, with respect with the global work of the group, it represents a minority of the publications. So you have the different parts. Uh, so, there are various factors which can explain this selection, and physicists, of course, have no control over the fate of their theories. In the case of the causal program, it's obvious that the Bell theorem played a major role in the legacy of the hidden variable theory. However, if non-locality uh, of the hidden variable theory was discussed by the group, it was not their main concern. For instance, Vichy accepted non-locality after the decisive experiment of Alain Aspect. So, uh, now I, I will give you a historical overview of the main theoretical ideas develop developed by the EHP group. So, as I said before, the, the story of the causal program started in the summer of 1951 when David Bohm, who were in Princeton, sent his draft paper to Rue de Breuil at the Henri Poincaré Institute after Pauli not noticed him that his theory is very similar to the Breuil pilot wave theory of 1926. De Breuil remained circumspect, but Bohm's paper draws the attention to the young Jean-Pierre Vigier, who became De Breuil assistant one year before. Vigier, worked at that time on general relativity and unitary affine theory. He made a conceptual link between the Bohmian theory and general relativity. Indeed, both conceptualized particles as localized deformation of a physical field. Vigier convinced De Broglie to return to his old theory of uh, 1926, but on the form of the double solution in which two solutions coexisted. A, statica, a statistical one, solution of the Schrodinger equation, and a physical one, which is governed by a nonlinear equation close to the particle location. But what the, uh, the picture shows here. So in the middle, you have the nonlinear term of the solution. And far from the, uh, the, the middle, uh, the, the solution uh, coincides with, with Schrodinger solution equation. Um, so, until 1954, the main task of Vigier, De Breuil, and David Bohm was to improve the model proposed by Bohm. Indeed, indeed some serious issues remain. But um, before proceeding uh, on this issue, I would like to make a focus on the reception of the Bohm paper in France and how it circulated among French physicists. So, if we have no traces of the correspondence between Bohm and De Breuil, the correspondence between David Bohm and Evry Schatzman, the astrophysicist, gives some clues. It's interesting to, noti to notice that the relationship between David Bohm and Louis De Breuil was not a love story. There were obviously a quarrel concerning priority. According to De Breuil, uh, the Bohm theory was nothing more than his whole theory of 1926. Bohm strongly disagreed with this stance since the theory of measurement is absent from the Broglie pilot wave theory. Uh, so here you have the, uh, the correspondence of uh, Avery Schatzman with uh, Bohm uh, who wrote a letter to Avery Schatzman. And uh, at the end, uh, he made a very interesting statement when he said, with regard to people like De Broglie, who had the idea for a similar interpretation of quantum theory, my attitude is that if a man finds a diamond and not realizing its value threw it away, then the stone belongs to the first person who finds it again and does realize its value. Uh, and in the De Broglie side, he even uh, didn't quote Bohm in the introduction of his book, La Physique Quantique Restera t elle indéterministe, written in 1953. Uh, uh, in which he justifies why he decided to come back to his first view about the interpretation of quantum mechanics. He only mentions recent work by various theorists who tend to resume by deepening in various ways similar ideas to those uh, of the author 25 years ago. Uh, it's a second uh, letter uh, from David Bond to Avery Chessman. And, uh, and my, which is very interesting is that uh, 
we can notice that in the earlier years of the collaboration of Bohm with the French physicist, Bohm did as much as possible to bypass De Broglie and communicate to Vigier through every Schatzman. And Bohm even accuses uh, De Broglie of, plagi of plagiarism. So, let's back to uh, the theory. So, in the early years, the most serious objection against the theory was formulated by Pauli in uh, Louis de Broglie, Physicien et Penseur, uh, in 1952. So, um, Pauli objected that in the causal interpretation, the assumption that the psi function satisfies Schrodinger equation is, cons is inconsistent. The initial probability distribution could be, at least in principle, independent of the psi field and dependent only to a degree of information concerning the location of particles. So, in order to respond to the Pauli objection, Vigier and Bohm modified the first Bohmian model and adopted a uh, hydrodynamical representation of the theory. So, the, uh, the transition to the hydrodynamical representation uh, of the hidden variable theory is quite natural. It's, it is based on a modified version of uh, the nine, uh, 1926 modeling hydrodynamical representation and further developed, developed by Tabe, Takabayashi and Schoenberg in the early 50s. Uh, in the model, particles are assumed to be localized in a region where the density, rho, of the fluid takes high values. So here you have the, how you can find the continuity equation by separate uh, the real and the imaginary part in the Schrodinger equation. Um, so, in a series of papers, Bohm and Vigier demonstrated that an arbitrary probability density of particles will ultimately decay into one of the uh, psi squared <coughs> of the psi squared solution of the Schrodinger equation. That was done by introducing some random fluctuation in the physical field. So you have the reference of the publication. Yeah. Um, for Bohm and Vigier, these fluctuations are one of the most important properties of the causal model. And because they take the origin from a subquantum level. The subquantum level will be governed by different law than the current law of quantum mechanics and will be the basis for a more fundamental theory. In addition, uh, they made the hypothesis that the fluctuation of the field could explain the creation and in annihilation of elementary particles. So, uh, subquantum field will have similar properties of uh, Dirac Eiffel. And so, uh, from the introduction of the subquantum level, Vigier makes a link with Lenin's statement in materialism and imperial criticism about the inexhaustible nature of matter. According to Vigier, the subquantum level is a perfect illustration of the accuracy of the Lenin's view about the development of sciences. The introduction of the subquantum level was the basis for the formulation of what he calls the infinite level of organization of matter. In this view, nature is organized uh, in an infinite level that are nested each other. Each, each level is governed by its own laws. Uh, the action of a deeper level onto another is modelized by the use of statistical laws. So, the psi field of ordinary quantum mechanics is a statical approximation of the subquantum field. What is interesting here is that this incursion into philosophy comes initially from a physical justification. So, since 1955, Vigier recruited phys physicists to work with De Broglie and him on the development of the theory. Vigier was a member of the French Communist Party, and the physicists he recruited were, in majority, also members of the party. They were all young on, in the first years of the career. The first collaborators were Georges Lochac, um, uh, Georges Lochac, Francis Holbox, Francis Fair, who defended his PhD thesis on the causal interpretation, and the group were later joined by Japanese physicists from Nagoya, so mainly Yukawa and Takabayashi. Ta Takabayashi spent one year in Paris in 1957. In the 1960, over collaborated with the group as Pierre Elion, Maurice Clément, and Moum Tune. Moum Tune, who joined the Khmer Rouge Revolution at the end of the 1960s. Every Chassman, who was in Paris Institute of Astrophysics, also made small contribution in the early years, but his support was more ideological. 
Um, so, after uh, 1957, uh, in collaboration with Takabayashi and other Japanese physicists from the University of Nagoya, the group focused on particles with spin. As a consequence, they aimed at it extending the causal interpretation to Pauli and Dirac equation. The former is classical, whereas the latter is relativistic. Then, uh, um, the spin is naturally introduced in the hydrodynamical model by, consider by considering that the fluid is constituted by a set of small rotating bodies continuously distributed in space. In this cup, sp uh, spinning particles could be uh, modeled as vortex in a fluid. That's why I put René Descartes' uh, picture that is very similar, I think, uh, oops. Um, in conception, what, what was uh, the representation of the, uh, the theory. Uh, Otter also have shown that the hydrodynamical description of the spinor with the equation of quantum mechanics could not be carried out on the basis of point-like elements. Indeed, in order to describe the existence of an angular momentum density in such waves, they had to consider particles as extended bodies. Here again, the introduction of extended bodies have both a physical and philosophical justification. Physically, it is needed for the internal consistency of the theory. Uh, in the philosophical point of view, extended model of particle is, according to the physicists of the group, a more accurate description of particles than the point-like representation. Moreover, the group uh, thought that it was maybe a way to avoid the problem of uh, renormalization in quantum field theory since divergences appear because particles are, considers, uh, are considered as points. So, now it's the last part uh, of the theory. And the last development uh, was a transition from hydrodynamical model to the rotator model. The rotator model derived from Yukawa's bilocal theory that he elaborated in the 1950. In the 1960s, Vichy spent one year in Japan at the University of Nagoya and he worked in collaboration, as I said it before, with uh, Yukawa and Takabayashi on the bilocal theory and the rotator model. So, basically, the theory introduced two four vectors. Uh, and the particle is described uh, so by uh, the four, big, four vector A, A, and B uh, that are centered on the same point. Um, the, the same point X, which is the center of the particle. So, uh, the A, so it, uh, A, B are called tetrad. And so A is fixed uh, with respect to the labor laboratory frame and it defines the external parameter of the particles. And the B uh, tetrad defines the internal parameter of the particles. So, and the model, uh, this model of particle theory is based on the quantization of the rotational movement of the, of the B mu tetrad around A mu. And the transformation from B to A is made by two functions, that I define it, uh, which have other angles in uh, Minkowski space parameters. Then, uh, by a standard uh, procedure of quantization uh, the, uh, of the angular momentum, Vigier, Bohm, and Ilion identify three major operators. Uh, so that was made in this article, internal quantum state of hyperspherical uh, Nakano relativistic rotators. And there's uh, three operators, so I, Z, N, and Q. Uh, and each one are uh, associated with three quantum numbers. And by remarking the relation between the partial derivative with respect with C1, with V1, sorry, they separate the global isospin operator between the strongest and internal isospin. So they obtain the following formula, which is the empirical nishijima gelman formula that links isospin, strangeness, baryon number, and charge. So the main difference with the Gelman formula is that hypercharge, uh, baryonic number, and strangeness play no role, since strangeness is linked with what uh, the group calls the global isospin. So and on this basis, so we can't see anything, uh, the, 
they made uh, they propose the classification of elementary particles that recovers the Nishijima Gelman class classification. And that's why, in my opinion, the main accomplishment of the group in theoretical physics. So that's my conclusion. Um, so the aim of VG and his collaborators cannot be reduced to a Marxist attempt to challenge the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics. And in the mind of the group, the contribution in particle physics is a logical continuation of the hidden variable theory of 1952. Thank you. I'm sorry for my accent. Thanks for a great and uh, very fast talk, <laughs> or it's at fast? least very short, I should say short, not fast, 24 minutes or something oh, like sorry. that. <laughs> no, it's perfect. We have a lot of time for discussion. I see some hands already. Um, if that is Alexei showing his hand, yes. <laughs> Kenji? Yep. Uh, um, uh, maybe a little, a little comment in the question. The comment is um, there are several works that are describing Japanese physicists as influenced by Marxism. Not only the one that you mentioned, also the Sakata model yeah. and the Quark models. Since you're showing that there was quite a lot of collaboration between them, so maybe you'll have to sum up to, to, to incorporate that because there is kind of more work on the how Marxists influence Japanese uh, uh, models of, of elementary particles up, up to the mid-1960s, uh, approximately. Uh, and I don't know if they, how much there was a connection between them to, 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 to frame, but obviously there was more, uh, um, and the question is, um, I was puzzled by these letters from Wong to Shatsky. Uh, uh, did they know each other personally? Because, I mean, obviously Wong trusts Shatsky for some reason. Because he, uh, he, did they, uh, so, and what was the beginning of the connection? So, did Shatsky write his paper that it's been nothing see because he read or knew about Wong's approach? Or, on the contrary, did Wong trust Shatsky because he, he, he read Shatsky? Um, so that's a question, because in that letter that uh, I can go back uh, here, at the beginning it speak about uh, Dr. Jules Charnet, which is uh, in what, what uh, he was in Princeton, and he said that Jules Charnet uh, recommended uh, Bohm to send this letter to Schatzmann. It was the first letter to... Before, before, it was in, at, at the end of 19, it was before Bonn was in Brazil. Uh -huh. And before the publication, so. Okay. And, but I have no information about this uh, Jules Charnet, and only, I don't, I, uh, I don't know if he was a Marxist or not, and I don't know why he... Obviously, we still have conspiracy Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Christoph. Also about the international communist conspiracy. I, I understood you early on in the talk like you were going to address this um, idea um, that, or you were, were going to criticize this idea that they were all sort of, you know, that this was motivated by Marxism. Um, um, I would, uh, were you going to say something about that? I didn't really get that in the end, the feeling you were addressing that point. About? Did I misunderstand that? In the beginning of your talk, I understood you that you were going to um, criticize that idea that they were going to, that they were motivated by um, um, I Marxist think they, idea. they were, but uh, we can reduce their motivation to the fact that they were Marxist. And because of uh, one of the main collaborators was Louis de Bruy, who was ob uh, obviously not a Marxist. And, and so my, my point is that there existed a, a a real scientific program uh, in particle physics that motivated all the group during maybe maybe 15 years. But some were motivated as VG to, uh, to produce a more comprehensible uh, picture of, com of quantum mechanics um, uh, with the introduction of determinism and causality and extended picture of uh, particles. But um, it's both, uh, they are both philosophical and uh, physical uh, justification. 
So what's the point? It's mixed. Okay, Kenji. Uh, thank you very much for the very interesting talk. Um, Actually, I was going to ask about this the Japanese collaboration, uh, especially um, uh, Takabayashi seems to be a very natural person to be in that group, but you covered. I don't really understand. Was his involvement, I mean, he really participated and collaborated with the French business there? I mean, if it's uh, Takata, then I understand, but why you cover? I mean, it's possible that the Yukawa's non local uh, field theories was. Sort of discussed in, in, in the, uh, and, uh, first of all, he, he uh, you, you cover it's a physicist in Kyoto, not uh, at Nagoya University. But his paper was uh, no uh, paper on the no local field theory seems to be discussed much among the physicists uh, at Nagoya. So I'm wondering in what way he was Yukawa became involved in, in the could you mm. if possible could you tell more about yes. I think the collaboration uh, was uh, when Vigier was in Nagoya, and because the, uh, I don't remember, I don't remember the exact uh, reference, but the, there is a, an article that uh, is written by Yukawa and Vigier on on the bilocal theory. So that's why I, I did uh, Yukawa on, on the international collaborators, but. Uh, I never been in Japan to see the archives, uh, and I don't know m many about uh, what he really did in in Japan. I only have the articles. But that's a problem. Okay. So there's now eight people on the list. I quickly uh, tell you the names. It's Ariana, uh, Aaron, Roberto, uh, Alex, Martin, and Jean Philippe and uh, Guido. So Ariana is next here up front. And if I missed you, raise your hand again. Ah, Oliver, sorry. <laughs> well, thanks. I um, I have a question on the on this rotator model in the sense that um, I, I'm not very familiar with the history of hidden variables. Yep. But um, you presented this model as as a part of the story of hidden variables, and I'm sure for the, for the people writing, uh, uh, for these authors, the, the historical actors, they presented it also like that. On the other hand, that model uh, is quite typical of that period. People trying to interpret, for example, isospin stringent internal quantum numbers in terms of some <coughs> additional space, rotations, I mean, such models they are already there in the early 50. Mm. I, I mentioned a couple in my talk. I mean, the, especially in, in Japan. The, 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 in Japan, the, the, there are lots of these kind of models, but you have them in France with Krenke and, and this kind of, I mean, different variations. So I would, I, I, I mean, of course you can understand this as uh, hidden variables. I would like, just like to, uh, if you can say a couple of words, why this specific model is hidden variables uh, uh, or all the others are, or I mean, just this connection. So, uh, what is the question? So what the question is, um, you characterize this rotator model yeah. as in some way linked to hidden variables yeah. theory. Uh, would you say that all the very similar models that were there at that time are also in some way linked to hidden variables theory, to causality? I'm just trying. I'm not questioning it. Yeah. It's just the first time that I see this. I don't know that much about uh, our models, but uh, what I am sure is that uh, this physicist made the link. Uh, um, there's a logical link uh, in the mind uh, mm -hmm. about this model. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so uh, only this. Okay. No. Uh, I'm sorry. No. Okay. You can talk about it. <laughs> Next up is Aaron. Uh, so, so I was also curious about um, some of the connections to other work, especially because Vigier has the, the background in relativity and the idea that, uh, that particles could be uh, extended objects and engaging with the foundations of 
quantum mechanics and even having some relationship uh, or, or at least uh, some work with people uh, who have connections to France, was there, uh, were they reading or talking or, or, or making outreaches to people like John Wheeler or his other group who are proposing these sorts of, these, these, these models or, uh, um, and I, I was also curious if there's a connection between this, their causal work and the work that is happening in uh, causal debates around in quantum field theory, um, in the development of, of axiomatic quantum field theory, Whiteman axioms establishing whether quantum field theory could be causal or not, uh, and, and how to express causality. So I, I don't know if you, if you have connections to, to these <coughs> fields. Um, actually, I don't have, because uh, I don't have uh, correspondence between uh, letters between, I don't have uh, any correspondence of Vigier, so, but um, Maria Cecilia Bustamante may, uh, uh, told me that she, she has, <laughs> so <laughs> I am very happy uh, to, to meet uh, her at this conference, so, but until now I can't make, uh, I don't have, uh, Correspondence with uh, Vigier and the group with Wheeler and other, other physicists. But, but just in general, do you see these people as, as pretty isolated? I think They're so. Not, they don't read widely, they don't go to conferences yeah. widely, they just they do their own thing themselves, or do you see them as, as widely making connections to other, other people? I don't find, uh, <laughs> except uh, with. Uh, Japanese physicist. I, I don't. Ha, I don't find any clue that uh, this kind of interna, you know, international connection. Uh, okay. Maybe it exists, but I'm. So Roberto is next. <laughs> I met Vigier when I was studying the. Uh, uh, controversial reception of uh, the opposition to relativity, in particular to special relativity. I know that at least in a later period, Vigier was a strong opponent on the, the way in which the ether drift experiment were understood, or even the Sagnac effect was understood in relativistic terms. And um, if I'm correct, he, he began uh, promoting a very strong view in which the ether were the ether was present and he described himself as an ether believer in a certain sense and I'm wondering if it's possible to draw the connection of if you know when he began to uh, stress uh, his ether depending world view. Uh, what was it clear? About ether? <coughs> the ether, he, he began <coughs> talking explicitly about the ether. Yeah, of the uh, right. Yeah, uh, Vigier. Yeah, yeah, but it was a kind of ether of the, it was uh, similar uh, with uh, the ether of the uh, right. Yeah, yeah, um, but, but when, 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 when did it begin? Be with the introduction of the subquantum uh, field. Yeah, subquantum level. So six minutes, five people on the list. Alex, <coughs> please, like, don't take more than half a minute for your questions. <laughs> Somebody actually did get a Kyberinia. <laughs> so I'll ask my question. Sorry, I was distracted. Um, I just want you, you introduced your, your story as saying that it was going to be the story of a failure and then you ended with what was their, mm. their biggest success and the, um, the construction of the, of the Gelman um, Nishiyama equation. So what, um, when and why did it fail after this and in, in what sense was that regarded as a success at the time by themselves or even by others, that uh, reconstruction of the Gelman? I think it was ignored, and because uh, if uh, I looked uh, about the uh, citations uh, in Web of Science, and articles were not quoted by anybody, and so I think this program was 
mainly uh, ignored by the community, and because in the because it ended in 1965-66 when the quark model uh, emerged. Okay. So, but it's my answer to Martin. So I sort of want to press you a bit on the answer which you gave to to Christoph. What does the causal uh, interpretation do for this research pro program which they have? Where does it, um, maybe also in relation to Ayana's question, what, yeah, why can these people do what others maybe cannot? Uh, I don't get does the causal interpretation actually do something for them or is it sort of an addendum? Could they? for the, the research problems which they want to uh, address and solve. I mean, that's what you claimed, right? That the, this drives the search for the causal interpretation. I think the, uh, the fine, uh, what, what they, they thought the, the main achievement was the, to find a, a theoretical explanation of uh, one possible theoretical explanation of the Gelman-Nishijima formula, what was empirical. And I think, um, I oppose this, uh, the fact is um, many, uh, many uh, criti at, uh, at that time, many f uh, physicists criticized, as Rosenfeld, as um, many opponents criticized, that it was only ideological. And so, my point is just to demonstrate that it wasn't. And but they made maybe not uh, a, a revolutionary contribution, but a small contribution to theoretical physics. By uh, it was a, an attempt uh, to. Uh, to build a particle, uh, a particle uh, theory of, part, uh, of particles in the, before the quark model, and okay. that's it. Um. Jean-Philippe is next, and please keep in mind we don't have much time. We started three minutes late, so we still have three minutes. It will be short. Uh, thank you, Virgil, for the talk. Uh, we already discussed together the fact that Fogg was criticizing them uh, even in French publications, and I'm just wondering who else was criticizing them or, or if only the community was ignoring them completely. In what, in who else was criticizing, criticizing them in the pub French publications? Je peux la faire en français. Yeah, yeah, I understood, but <laughs> I think uh, basically all the, uh, inside the Communist Party, many, uh, the majority of uh, physicists, just uh, um, for instance, Francois Lursa. Um, and there are strong debates uh, with uh, Rosenfeld and, and Vigier about uh, the, the debate uh, about complementarity. And with, there is this uh, Bristol conference in 1956, I think. And so plenty of physicists. Guido Bacagalupi. And you're the last one. Uh, I'm curious about uh, um, how the program seems to have ended. I mean, you, you talked about uh, success in the 60s, and then, and then you stop. I, I know that Bohm lost interest in the causal interpretation in the 60s. Uh, his interest was revived by his later students and, and collaborators. I was just wondering uh, whether that happened in France as well, and uh, for what reasons, if so. Mm. So uh, first, um, there's the fact that many, when uh, I made interviews with uh, some of the physicists who were involved in this program, and many uh, just um, changed their view about uh, Marxism, 
and that was uh, one reason. And uh, I, I made an interview of uh, Lochac, who told me that um, he, he just uh, left, when he left the Communist Party, he decided to, to leave this program and that he said that more ideological. And, and then Vigier, the, uh, at the end of the 1960s, he changed from field <coughs> and he made collaboration with uh, Jean-Claude Becker and in astrophysics. Um, so th the group just uh, vanished. And um, I think, n and with uh, one uh, explanation is uh, that with the, uh, the emergence of the quark model, and I think many thought that the, this theory and it was just useless. And okay. Olival has the last question. Uh, I like very much, uh, I like it very much your presentation and I'm a little suspicious to, to, to say this, but I like it very much, not because I am the supervisor, but because uh, I think, yeah, <laughs> because I think that it, it's, uh, uh, it sheds some light uh, about something that in the historiography of physics uh, was not clear. Uh, that paper by Andrew Cross, uh, 1991, uh, when I read it, uh, almost uh, uh, 20, most than 20 years ago, I was uh, completely, uh, uh, not satisf satisfied, or, uh, not content with the paper, and I wrote a, a short letter which was published in, in Social Studies of Science telling something in that direction, uh, that uh, the crisis of physics, uh, as understood by Vigier, Bon, and others, was not so, was not only uh, an ideological issue. There was some important physics problems over there. And uh, I, 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 I remarked, for instance, that VGA kept his, uh, his commitment to the causal program till that time, until the end of, of, of his life. Then I think that you are, sh you are uh, shedding some light uh, about the, the scientific content. But my second comment, you know that we have, uh, I would say, nuances, uh, slightly different views uh, about uh, how connected was the approach to particle physics to the previous uh, hidden variables uh, or the, the, the causal problem. Uh, so my view is that the link was more uh, philosophical in the sense that uh, this approach to, to particle physics was realistic, was in principle deterministic. So it was more kind of a philosophical commitment than uh, kind uh, of a, 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 a continuity of a scientific program. Then I hope that you can uh, convince me that uh, there was a, a stronger uh, scientific connection or model uh, in terms of model between uh, the hidden variables mode, uh, uh, model or theory and uh, the, uh, the particle physics. And my final comment is that this connection between French and Japanese Marxist physicists, I think that it's uh, a good example that we need some international collaboration because I know people who start this from the side of Japanese. The, the, uh, two years ago, somebody presented this at the HS, HSS meeting. I talked to him, but he only saw the Japanese side. Now, you speak only from the French side, so we need some uh, a team to, to see both sides. You take that as a comment, or you want to reply? Uh, you don't have to. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> you, you're allowed to, but you don't have to. That's okay. No, it's okay, so let's thank him again for... <laughs> an exhaustive and exhausting uh, round of questions. Um, our next speaker is Thiago Hartz.